Mark, forget Lululemon and Adidas. I just watched the Nike presentation, flanked by some of New York's most important fashion magazine editors. Is Nike a lifestyle brand? Uh, absolutely. We're first and foremost a sport brand. But you have to realize sport has actually moved into lifestyle in a more clear and present way. So uh, sport is all around us, and it's influencing everything, everyday wear. Tights, for example, it's the new denim. I mean, so you see sportswear all the time in the streets of New York, London, Paris. Uh, so we're, we're a part of that. You mentioned the Nike female athlete as she's doing bar classes, boot camp, dance. It makes me think Misty Copeland is now the face of another brand. Do you see yourself signing athletes that aren't traditional athletes, that could be dancers, per se? Yeah, we, you know, athletes uh, obviously are represented in traditional sports, but you see athletes in everyday uh, life as well. Uh, we're focused on the best athletes in the world, you know, Olympic athletes, world record athletes, but we're also focused on everyday athletes. That's where we get the insights that really drive the innovation behind the product that we make. What prompted you to do this? This is an incredible event, but just six months ago, we were here in New York with Under Armour, who also relaunched, made a big push for women. I normally think Nike's first. They're there, and others are following. Why are you, in this case, seeming to be second to the game? Well, we, we've been uh, working with female athletes for 40 years, over 40 years. And uh, as you saw today, we had 27 amazing athletes uh, covering a whole range of sports. Uh, so, you know, women's uh, sports and uh, health and fitness is not new to Nike. Uh, and it happens to be one of the most vibrant and fast-growing parts of our business. So we're incredibly excited about where we are and, more importantly, where it's going. You are connected to 65 million women digitally. That's Do you see yourself a tech company? Well, we, social is everywhere. So everybody connects with each other socially, all the different platforms. And obviously, Nike is no different. So we create platforms, or we, we work with different platforms and connect with, as you said, 65 million women. We also have women uh, signed up with Nike Plus, Nike Plus Running, the Nike Plus Training Club. Uh, apps, uh, health and fitness and sports app happen to be the fastest growing app category out there, growing 85% uh, more than any other app. So Nike's part and parcel of all of that, and that's really a part of our future. Clearly, the Nike customer, the female customer, is important to you. Was she a factor in your decision when you severed ties with Ray Rice? Well, women athletes have always been important to Nike. I think what's happening now is that uh, sport and fitness is actually becoming more a part of everyday lifestyle. And it's really permeating every aspect of uh, culture and society. Uh, this isn't a trend, it's a movement. Uh, it's a, uh, a cultural shift, really, in a way. Um, yeah, so w we, we have a, uh, a very close relationship with, obviously, the world's best athletes, but women in general. And that's really where, where the insights that we, uh, we uh, drive our innovation come from. You have a particularly close relationship with the NFL. Yes. Can you help change NFL culture? Yeah, well, obviously recent uh, incidents that uh, we've all you know, heard about and talked about are very troubling for everybody, uh, not just in terms of sports, but you know, society. Uh, and we've made our position known with the NFL that we don't tolerate any sort of domestic violence, child abuse. That's really important. Uh, I see the commissioner, Goodell, really uh, responding. He's, uh, I think this has been a, a great lesson for the NFL. He's acknowledged that. He's moving forward. They're making some changes. And I'm optimistic that uh, they're moving in a, in a better direction. But you haven't severed ties or made, an, made a statement with regard to Hope Solo, who has yeah. been arrested for domestic yeah. violence. Well, we, we keep close with current situations, and uh, we assess based on the knowledge that we have. Uh, so we'll keep close uh, ties with what's going on in that situation and then make our judgment, you know, when the time is right. Yeah. When I Just two weeks ago was the female half marathon yes. sponsored by Nike in yes. San Francisco. I don't normally see Nike as the banner sponsor, more the athlete sponsor. Right. When I look to the World Cup where you crushed it, yeah. Adidas was really the name on the marquee, uh -huh. but it was you had the yeah. boot. And now yeah. you're the number one seller of cleats. That's right. Is that the direction you want to be in, sponsoring the athletes, not the events? Well, we've always been close to the athlete. The, the connection we have with the athlete is really what drives uh, Nike. Uh, it's been that way since day one when Bill Byerman founded the company with Phil Knight, and it continues to be that you know, today. 
So we're less concerned generally with sponsorships of uh, events and more focused on, you know, the connection we have with athletes. Do you want to sponsor more women because they've got less headline risk given all the things around so many male athletes? No, I, I think it's uh, uh, the, the support of women and the sponsorship of uh, women and women's sports, I think, is just uh, a natural part of who we are as a company. Uh, it's obviously there's a growing... Uh, cultural shift going on with women's sports and health and fitness, a, a growing awareness, a movement that's uh, uh, transcending, uh, you know, sports in a way. Uh, the, the numbers are amazing in terms of participation. I mentioned gym memberships are way up. There's kind of a running boom going on for women right now. We see that in San Francisco where the women's uh, half marathon sells out really, or not sells out, but fills up in minutes. It's, uh, it's amazing. CrossFit uh, gyms yeah. are huge. Do you see yourself yeah. potentially looking to buy the Reebok brand, seeing that it's up for grabs? It's one area that you're getting into, but when you think yeah. CrossFit, yeah. the one thing that Reebok has going for it yeah. is CrossFit. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with the opportunities Nike has as a brand and our other brands in the portfolio. We've got Nike, Jordan, Hurley, Converse, uh, ample opportunity for growth. Uh, and that's where our focus is. Could LeBron yeah. outsell Jordan? Uh, You're like, I don't care, well, I got both in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, MJ is uh, a tough act to follow in, in that sense, but uh, I never say never. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing uh, the business that has, we've established around Michael Jordan, around his uh, legend and legacy. Uh, 30 he, editions of Jordans. <laughs> oh, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've been there since day one, you know, when we uh, introduced the first Jordan shoe, and to see what's happened with that brand and with Michael. He's the athlete other athletes love. Uh, he's the one that when he walks in a room, everybody's jaw drops. He, they're in awe of him. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to, to watch that. You mentioned earlier Flyknit technology, how you've cut 30 steps out of production. It's just one piece of material. Can we see the production of these shoes move to the U.S. because it's so simple to make? I think well, whether it's fly knit or other manufacturing uh, methods and techniques uh, that are advancing very quickly, I think that's a possibility, absolutely, to see uh, manufacturing in parts of the world that we don't see today, including the U.S. Now, while LeBron is such a big name, so is yeah. Kevin Durant, yeah. and there was huge headlines over a $300 million deal, but when you're clearing $28 billion bucks in profits, yeah. is $300 million nothing? You know, we don't say it's nothing, uh, but uh, Kevin Durant is an amazing athlete, uh, obviously on the court, off the court. We're all big KD fans, and uh, he's somebody that we think there's a great future with, uh, with, with basketball and beyond. So, was there yeah. ever a chance you would lose the contract with Kevin Durant? Was Under Armour really in the game, or was it just antagonistic bidding to get you to pay up? Well, I can't really say, uh, speak to the, um, you know, that, that period of time, other than to say that, uh, you know, we were focused on, you know, what we do best. We've had a great relationship with Kevin. Kevin is, uh, is, is a big Nike fan, not just because we've had a contract with him, but because of all the things that we've done with him on and off the court. Uh, so we're, we're confident in our relationship and, and uh, even more confident in what's possible coming. You mentioned Converse. You've got 22 lawsuits out there from Walmart to Ralph Lauren. Because they're stealing your jam here. Uh, well, you know, we, our IP, our trademark uh, property is incredibly important to us. And uh, we feel it's uh, critical to protect that. So we're taking the steps uh, we need to there. And, and uh, Converse, uh, we're very bullish on the opportunities with Converse going forward, not just with the Chuck Taylor franchise, but beyond and other, you know, aspects of footwear and certainly in apparel and in markets around the world. Have you yeah. thought about resale value? When you look, there are secondhand Jordans yeah. that go for $2,000 a piece. Why let that go in the secondhand market? Would you consider opening up a Nike second story platform where you can resell and capture those profits rather than let them go to the yeah. streets of Japan? Well, I don't think we're really fixated or focused on uh, trying to capture that secondary market. I think that's always gonna happen when you have a popular brand. When products sell out quickly, uh, you're going to create another market. Uh, are there some things we could do to take advantage of that? Possibly. You know, we're looking at that, but uh, that really hasn't been our fixation of focus. It's really to create the best product we can and then, uh, as we say, let the consumer decide. Do you think there's another way to work with Apple again? We know Fuel Band has had its trips. Yeah. 
Apple's obviously an extraordinary brand. Nike, an amazing brand. It seems yes. like a marriage made in heaven. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite bullish on our relationship with Apple. As you know, Tim Cook is on the Nike board. Uh, we're, uh, we've worked, uh, I've worked uh, uh, with Steve Jobs uh, a long time ago when we introduced the Nike Plus for the very first time. So as I look ahead and what's possible between Nike and Apple, two, as you said, amazing brands. Uh, technologically, we can do things together that we couldn't do independently. So yeah, that's part of our plan, is to expand the whole uh, digital frontier in terms of wearables and, and, and go from what we say is tens of millions of users. Right now, there's 25 million Nike Plus users, but to hundreds of millions. Do you really believe wearables are the future? Some people say it's just a fad. I think it's going to be a big part of the future, absolutely. I think it, what form it takes is the big question. But I think uh, people getting more information in, in a simple, user-friendly way uh, and getting feedback that helps them understand themselves better uh, is a way to improve you know, yourself and I think to connect with other people, to keep pace with what's going on in the world. So I think wearables, I think you know the, the form it takes is what's critical. You can go from very geeky kind of wearables today, we've seen all, all seen some of those, uh, to I think what you'll see in the future are things that are more stealth, more integrated, uh, more stylish, and uh, more functional. Yeah. One, one sport we haven't hit on is golf. Yes. Early on, people said, Rory, maybe you're overpaying, but he's had a great year. Is yeah. he going to be the new tiger for you? Because in the world of golf, non-golf fans will still say, who plays golf? Yeah. Uh, I think Tiger. And there haven't been other marquee names that people outside the golf world really know. Will Rory yeah. break through? I think Rory will uh, break through. He'll have a tremendous career. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say he'll be the next Tiger. Tiger's Tiger. Rory is Rory. Uh, I think they're both unique and incredibly talented in their own way. I think Tiger will, t Tiger will come back and we'll see some great things out of him. Uh, but I think Rory will continue to do uh, uh, incredibly well and have a fantastic career. Nike is selling yeah. so well. When I look how you're selling online and in Nike's own marquee stores, yeah. in five years, can you, make, w can you see yourself making the decision to only sell at Nike? Why use outside athletes? Uh, why use outside outlets? Well, we are uh, what we call an integrated marketplace where we have direct to consumer through our own retail, through Nike.com, through Wholesale.com, partnerships, and obviously the wholesale marketplace. That integration of all of that is really what's critical. I don't, see, I don't foresee uh, a point where all of that will be Nike owned. I do think that that integration of all of those channels, all those forms of retail will be really critical and how they play off of each other and how we segment those various uh, channels to work better together. Nike enthusiasts out there, what's your number one favorite Nike product right now? Oh boy. You have you know to. <laughs> it's like, how can I choose a child? You have to. Yeah. I, well, you know what? I'm a big fly knit fan. So uh, I have to say that fly knit, in terms of what's out there now, but also what's coming, because I see uh, things that others uh, don't, uh, is absolutely amazing. And I think uh, uh, the best is certainly yet to come. 